All right, let's dive into some things that I would do differently if I were starting over with my wealth journey. If you are trying to be better with your money, you wanna understand money, get better at budgeting, saving, and building wealth, tune in to this next episode. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Work Hard, Live Soft, where we talk about how to build a successful business so you can have the freedom to live a life you want. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about what I wish I would have done differently with my wealth building journey and some of the things that I have learned along the way. If you have been following me for a while now, you know that I've been candid about money and how much I make, how much I save how much I have been able to keep and the wealth that I've been able to generate. And I've been talking about that for so long now because I think money is such a nuanced conversation. It's a taboo topic. And many of us don't really know what we don't know. And I know for me, like as an adult, I'm always like, do they know this? Am I supposed to know this? I'm not really quite sure where I should be like with my money and my goals and my finances because nobody talks about it. So I'm going to be pretty candid in today's episode and I'm going to talk about just how to manage your money um, and some of the things I have learned along the way. I got to give a disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. I am just a person who's made money and has lost money. Um, So I'm not giving any official strategies that you need to be implementing. But I do want to share just what I've learned about money from going from making $35 per project to having clients that are paying me up to $30,000 a year. And so there's such a wide dynamic of how I've been able to earn money, but then learning about like, how do you actually get rich and how can you actually stay rich and what should you do to become wealthy? We'll also talk about the difference between rich and wealthy because there is a difference in baby. I want to be wealthy. I don't want to just be rich. I want to be wealthy as well. So as many of you know, when I first started making money professionally, um, I was a MySpace designer and I was getting paid between $35 to $50 per project. I was 18 years old. And during this time, I had not really learned a lot about money. You know, we don't really talk about money in school. And so if you're similar to me at 18 years old, you didn't really know what you were doing. All you knew was that you wanted a job or you wanted to be able to make enough money to buy cute clothes, maybe get your hair and nails done, um, go to parties, you know, all of the things that you're doing at 18, 19, 20, maybe even 21 years old. And so at this time, I'm not really thinking about a savings account. Um, I can't even remember how old I was when I opened up my first checking account, maybe maybe 16, 15 or 16 years old. But my goal was never really to have a lot of money because I didn't have any conception of what I should be doing with my money. Now, if you were fortunate enough to learn about money earlier on, you might be in a different place or you might have been in a different place in your mid 20s and 30s. But I know for me starting out, I'm like, I just thought I was so lucky that people were paying me to do something that I loved doing, which was creating custom MySpace pages, uh, creating club flyers, creating websites. And the first thing that I wish I would have learned about money or that I would have learned faster was that it's important to not only save money, but to understand what your money is doing for you. I was actually reading a book earlier this morning where they were talking about the concept of wealth and being wealthy and how being wealthy isn't just about accumulating a lot of money. It's about having the things in your life that actually bring you joy. And I thought that was so important and so profound because if you make a lot of money, but you don't know what makes you happy and you don't know what brings you joy, you're not even going to know what to do with your money. Now, I know we hear the saying that money doesn't buy happiness. I, for one, I completely disagree with that. But money can't buy you happiness if you don't know what makes you happy. And so you have to really understand, like, what are my values? What brings me joy? What makes me feel fulfilled? What gets me excited? And then when you make money, you want to put your money towards that. And when I think about how I leverage my money, I was having a conversation with one of my girlfriends. And, you know, this is one of my friends that when we go out, we get the drinks we want, we get the food we want. Like, we love being able to just have the freedom to do some of the things that we want. And I remember she and I were having a conversation of like, what is that balance between, you know, you only live once and the money is going to come back to me because money flows to me easily and I want to be a good steward of my money. And when I sat and I thought about it, 
I thought to myself, as long as I'm spending money on things that are in alignment with my values, that is an investment. And when I'm spending money on things that don't matter to me, then that's me not being a good steward of my money. So the first thing is really understanding what do you truly value so you can be more intentional about your money. Um, I remember I was working with a client earlier on in my design career. Um, she's the CEO of uh, the finance bar, Marsha Barnes. And I remember when I was working with her, she would always say, Maya, you need to save your money. You need to save your money. And I didn't understand. I'm like, what am I saving for? Like, I don't have bills. Um, I don't even know if I had a car at the time or if I was driving my parents' car. So I didn't have a lot of bills. So I didn't understand the concept of saving. Like, it didn't even correlate in my brain that having a savings account was something that was important. And so she would say, you're supposed to save just to save, right? Just so you can have money just in case you need it. And I think oftentimes we save with the assumption that there's gonna be a rainy day because we've heard about a rainy day fund. So we're planning for something negative to happen or we're saving because we wanna save for a vacation or save for something specific instead of just developing the habit of saving our money and not spending it all. You don't have to spend every single dollar that you have. Now, I do believe that every dollar needs a home, but having a home should be somewhere where you can house it, not <laughs> having a home of outside of your bank account, right? So you wanna make sure that you do build the habit of saving. But I share this story because when I was 24 years old, I had the opportunity to invest in my very first coaching program, and it was between somewhere like twelve or $15,000 for the entire year, and the deposit to work with her was $2,000. Had I not taken that advice from Marsha, I wouldn't have had the money because I had such a habit of just like, once I get the money, I spend it. Once I get the money, I spend it because I know more is going to be coming in. And I was so grateful that I had that $2,000. And I would say probably I had $2,100 in my account and I invested the $2,000 and no regrets because my business and my life changed so drastically after making that investment. But just knowing that I had money that I worked for and that I was responsible enough to save and responsible enough to invest made me feel so good about myself. And investing that money was just a reminder to myself of what I was worth, right? Like you can't technically put a dollar amount on your intrinsic value, but it was just a reminder that if I am saying that I want clients to pay me $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, am I able to put that money up for myself? So making that investment was a really big deal for me back then when I was 24, and I'm so grateful that I was saving. Now, also when it comes to saving is also making sure that you actually have enough money to save. This is making sure that you are profitable. So whether you're a business owner or you are working a nine to five, you have to learn how to budget meaning you also, you need to make sure that you have more money coming in than you have going out. And I know it just seems like such a simple and basic um, concept, but we don't really hear the concept outside of entrepreneurship a lot about being profitable. Now, I don't know what they call it outside of entrepreneurship. I assume it's just the same, the same phrase, be profitable. How can I make sure I'm making more money than what I'm spending. If you are working a job and your expenses are higher than what your salary is, you either need to decrease your expenses or you need to figure out a way to get more money. Those are your only two options when it comes to becoming more profitable. You either make more or you spend less. And you're going to get to a point where there's only so many expenses you can cut before you have to say, I simply need to make more money. And this is why we have people that have side gigs or they have side businesses because they're like, no matter what expenses I cut, I simply want more money. I need more money. I want to save faster. I want to be able to invest faster. I know for me that I want my business to be uh, at a 40% profit margin, you should decide how much more profitable you want to be. If your expenses are $4,000 a month and you are making $4,800 a month from your job, is $800 enough for you to save and be able to take trips or to buy the things that you truly value? This is only a question that you can answer, but the first step is one, understanding what you value, and two, seeing what your profits are. Are you profitable enough or do you need to reduce some of your expenses or go make some more money? 
It's also important to understand that you can have seasons where you're working more. So even if you feel like you need to make more money, whether it's asking for a raise or going to get a, a side gig, if you just say to yourself, hey, I just need to work a side job for six to 12 months, you can have those seasons where you're going to work a little bit harder or work a little bit more. Even as an entrepreneur, I don't believe in hustling, but I do believe in hustle seasons. Right? Hustling is not something that is sustainable, but it is something that is sometimes necessary when you need to hit revenue goals quickly. So you might need to be in a season where you need a hustle to become more profitable. And then long term, you just need to make sure that whatever you're doing to make money, whether it's your business or whether it's your job, that you're making enough money. So that is the first step. Once you become profitable and you can make sure that all of your bills are paid, you do, you do need to start thinking about um, how you can start saving more and you want to set savings goals. Now, typically you'll get the advice from a lot of uh, personal finance experts that you should save three to six months of your expenses. You can do even more. And I definitely think that's a great place to start having six months uh, worth of expenses. God forbid anything happened, you lose your job, you're unable to work, or you just get tired of your business and you want to take a break. You want to make sure that you have enough money that can cover you. But again, you have to do the math on this. You need to know how much money is going out for your basic needs. So you might be spending, again, $3,500, $3,800 a month on your basic needs plus fun and plus food, right? But if your basic needs simply are costing you $3,000 a month and you want to have three to six months of savings in your account, that's going to be nine dollars to $18,000 inside of your savings account. Now, I know that this number can seem scary, and I know that the math behind looking at the numbers of your salary and your expenses and all of that can be really intimidating, but it makes it very clear. I remember this was newly after I first started making six figures in my business and my two best friends, they're not entrepreneurs, which I actually love. And uh, my one best friend, Christina, she came over and my other best friend, Kayla came over, but Christina was helping me figure out how to budget. Guys, this was 2019, okay? I had already made the investments. I had, or had already learned about saving, but I had gotten to a place where there was um, lifestyle creep, right? Where when you make more money, you start to increase your lifestyle. You get the nicer apartment. You start to um, order your meal prep instead of cooking. You start to, you know, get the nice car. You start to get all of these nicer things and you get lifestyle creep, meaning that your expenses are increasing as you are making more money. So you're actually uh, potentially reducing your profits. So I remember Christina coming over and we printed out my bank statements and we were highlighting just all the areas that I was spending money, food, 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 eating out, eating out, because your girl does not like to cook. But I had to be responsible and aware of where my money was going. And during this time, I think I was making between twelve to $14,000 a month. And when I started to see my money, I set bigger goals for myself. Now, as I mentioned, to be more profitable, you either need to make more money or reduce expenses or a combination of both. I like to think as abundantly as possible, and I still do want to be a good steward of my money. So yes, I'll reduce some expenses here and there, but I'm thinking, how do I just make more money? And so when I went through this exercise, I was, it was also during a time frame where I was reading the book, The Game of Life and How to Play It by uh, Florence Shin Scovel. And hopefully I'm not butchering that name, but I've read this book two or three times at this point and it's just so phenomenal it just teaches you how to think and i remember one of her affirmations in there was i am so grateful that blank is on its way to me under grace in a perfect way and so i filled in my blank and i said i am so grateful that twenty thousand dollars it's is on its way to me under grace in a perfect way. And I remember writing that down and putting it inside of one of my journals or one of the other books that I was reading and I would look at it and in my office on my board, I would put $5,000 because I knew that was the amount that I had to make every single week. I would go in that office and not know how I was gonna make it, but I would look at it and say, girl, you better get on some sales calls today and you better ask for the price point that you want. Writing things down and looking at it can shift your identity and shift your a reality because it changes who you are and it changes how you show up in the level of discipline that you have. I think maybe two months later, I did 18,000, then 19,000, and then 21,000. 
And I'm so grateful that I did that because not only was I able to increase my revenue, but I was able to understand my budgeting better. So that way I was able to stay profitable. And a couple months after that, I um, just ran into, ran into some expenses with my business. And I'm just so grateful that I had that overage of money to be able to save. So I say all that to say, when you're doing your budget, make sure that you are clear on the number that you need in your account um, for your savings, whether it's a three month savings goal or it is a, a six month savings goal. So that's really just personal finance in its own, just simple money management. And for some of you listening, that might seem simple, it might seem basic, but for others, it might be like, you know what? I understood that I needed to budget and I understood that I needed to save, but I didn't have clear goals and clear numbers that I needed to hit. Now I wanna talk about the transition into building wealth. So when I started making $20,000 a month, um, I was also starting to consider buying a home, which is something that I had never considered. I like living in apartments, hence I bought the house and five years later, I moved into a high rise. Um, but at the time I did not like that living in an apartment, depending on where you live, they would increase the rent every year. And I'm like, you guys are increasing the rent and not increasing the value. It's a no for me. I'm not trying to move year after year. Let me just go buy a house. The beautiful thing about ignorance is that you don't have all of the doubt and fear in your mind of what is not possible, right? I said, let me go buy a house. And that was probably like a four week process for me as an entrepreneur. And I would hear sometimes people say like, oh, it's so challenging and you need all the paperwork. I'm like, listen, I have some money in my account and I need to buy a house. Like, let's figure it out. So during this time, I'm learning about purchasing a home and I'm learning about building wealth. I remember talking to my friend, George Achenpong. He's the CEO of Melon and Money. Shout out to him. I just got back from his wealth weekend. Phenomenal event. Um, but I've been friends with him and his wife for a decade now. And this is the person that I go to anytime I have a money question. I was so ignorant on wealth building, on finances, on 401k, on investing. Um, and I'm still learning about those things every day. But I remember saying, like asking him, like, what should I be doing with my money? Should I focus on paying off all of my debt, right? Because when you're budgeting, you also want to consider paying down some of your debt. Should I focus on investing some of my money? And um, I remember the advice that he gave me based on my specific situation, so this might not be for everybody, was that to prioritize investing and I could still pay down my debt, but that the money that I would make from investing would be like I would make more off of the interest that I invested more than uh, the interest that I was being charged by not like paying off all of my debt at one time. So I don't know if that makes clear sense. Is that clear or no? So basically, let's say that um, the interest on a hundred dollar debt was five percent, meaning if I borrowed a hundred dollars, then I would owe a hundred five dollars, right? but the interest on my investments was 9% and I invested $100. So as a result, I made nine extra dollars. So the overage of my investment would make my net worth higher than the money that I borrowed. And essentially the wealth game is making sure that you have more assets, which is you know your cash and the things you own more than the liabilities, your debt and your loan. So I know that can get a little bit unclear, but also, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. Maybe I can even do a Q&A with um, my financial advisor or, or even George. But so anyway, so he gave me that advice just based on where I was. I don't have that much uh, debt anyway. I think I had um, ten to $15,000 of a school loan, and that was it. I didn't own anything else at that time. Um, so I started learning how to invest. I mentioned this in another episode. I used the company Stash. Um, where I was doing small investments. I put $25 into Microsoft, Google, um, Apple, and Facebook, and I've been auto-investing $25 a week into those companies for years now, and I have tens of thousands of dollars invested into that company, um, and I've had about a 20% return. So smart investments, really grateful for just all of the advice that I've been able to get along the way. So transitioning to the wealth building journey, once you have mastered like having a schedule of paying down your debt, 
you have mastered, okay, I know how much money I'm bringing in. I, I know how much money is coming out. You do want to start thinking about investing, meaning you want your money to be making money for you. This is where I learned about compound interest. And I had no idea what compound interest was. I was like, my money gets to make money for me. Like I didn't understand that if I put money into a stock or if I put money into a high yield savings account, which I'll talk about in a second, that my money will grow. Even now, like when I'm talking to friends or talking to mentees about them saving their money, you know, I want them to have, you know, their general savings account. But I also say, look into a high yield savings account, which is usually between like four to five and a half percent compound interest because you want your money to grow for you. So when my money was in my regular checking or my regular savings, I could have thousands of dollars in the account and then I would make eight cents. And I'm like, wait a minute. Now, if I had thousands of dollars in another account, I would be actually making dollars, right? $5, $50, $500. So long I'm making dollars. Like y'all have thousands of dollars of my money in your account. I want to make money off of that. So I would recommend researching compound interest and maybe some stocks that you want to invest in. The reason that I like Stash is because you can buy partial stocks. So I think right now, for example, like Apple might be $220 a share. And again, when I was younger and new to investing, I didn't have a full $220 to invest into one stock. I'm like, listen, I got $25. I'm going to let this accumulate over time. So um, now I have multiple stocks of Apple, but I started small. So being okay with starting small. I think what's important to learn about wealth building is that it's a long game. This is not, not the overnight success. This is not the how I made $10,000 in two weeks. This is not the how I had a $100,000 launch in one weekend. This is a long game and you want to just be really mindful of it is okay to start small. It is okay to start small. So this is not something that you're going to do to flex on the internet. This is not something you're going to do to pull the money out next week when you need it for an emergency. This is to set you up for your future. And when I first started making money with my business, like I was young, I thought I wanted to do this forever. I'm going to be a graphic designer forever and I'm going to be a coach forever. And I'm going to do this until the day that I die. And 15 years in, I'm like, I need my money to make money for me because I need to make sure that my work is always optional. I want running my business to be optional. I want working to be optional. And that is the difference between being rich and being wealthy. When you are rich, you have a lot of money. When you are wealthy, you have a lot of options. I want to live a life where I have options. I want to live a life where I have time. And I measure my wealth in time, meaning if I shut down my business and I didn't do anything, how long would I have until I would need to go get a job? Or how long would I have until I needed to go do another webinar or do another launch or to get new clients? And so the time that you're able to take off and um, from making new money is the time that measures your wealth, essentially. So you wanna make sure that you always have money coming in. So the game is when you retire, to make sure that you have enough money in your investment account that's paying you in interest per month where you're able to live off of. So typically people, I don't know what the exact number is now because the way our economy is set up, but usually you would have, from my understanding, about one and a half to two million dollars in your retirement account that would then pay you, let's say, five thousand dollars a month. And again, you're gonna have to know what your expenses are, but the amount of time that you're able to live off of the money that is coming in is how wealthy you are essentially. So if your expenses start to increase and you're having to do more to make more money, then you're shortening that time of your wealth gap, so to speak. So it's just really important to understand that wealth is a long game and you're gonna have to ask a lot of questions along the way. One of the things that I say all the time is you have to risk looking silly, looking stupid, looking dumb, looking ignorant, recognizing your ignorance is the first step to being successful. Because once you realize you're ignorant in something, then it's your responsibility to ask the question, ask the right person, and then take action. Ask the right question, ask the right person, and take action. That is your steps to being successful. And so once I knew I didn't understand something, I asked people who had money. And then when they told me what to do, I took action. That's how I got to where I am right now. I didn't just magically wake up and know about money. I had to first understand 
what don't I know? What do I need to know? And who has the answer? And whether you have somebody in your network that's able to give you that answer or you have to make an investment to get the answers, you are always your best investment. Do not be afraid to part ways with your money to make more or to have a better life. So I'm so grateful for all of the people who have helped me along the way. Now, when I think about some things that I would have done differently, baby. Now, I am really grateful that I learned about budgeting and saving during, during the time frame that I did. But when my business grew so rapidly, my business went from um, like $330,000 to a million to 2.1 million to a million and then to 800,000. And I'm making investments in my business based on the assumption that my business is going to keep growing and, and keep scaling. And so a great friend of mine who is very wealthy gave me some advice and I was slow to take the advice. Okay. Listen, when I say success, love speed, success, love speed. One thing that I would change if I could go back to 2021 or to 2022 when I was most profitable in my business would be to move my money out of my, my bank account and to move it, move a lot of it into a high yield savings account and a lot of it into an investment account. So that money could make money for me. Not only would I have done that just so the, the money wasn't sitting there not making money, I would have also done it because I don't touch the money in my investment accounts and I don't touch the money in my high yield savings accounts because I know that's my long term money. When I have money sitting in my checking account, in my brain, it is available to spend. And so I'm spending money at a more rapid rate than I should have been spending it at because in my mind, it was available to me. So what I, what I would say is, you need to be very clear and mindful of how much money you want sitting in your account and have a very, very clear goal of how much money you want to accumulate for your net worth in your investment accounts, in your high yield savings accounts, and even in real estate if you start to dabble in real estate. Now my goal in life when it comes to building my net worth is just being more responsible of putting my money in the right places. And so I'm very intentional. I still have, um, I still use stash. I still auto invest. So that's always growing. But now when I get large lump sums of money, I'll have a conversation with my accountant, figure out how much of payroll needs to be in the account and then any excess. How do I want to invest it in the business? How much of it do I want to put in high yield savings? How much of it do I want to put in stash for um, my stock portfolio. So that is the number one thing that I would change. And listen, it's very easy to beat yourself up for the things that you didn't know. It's very easy to beat yourself up for the things that you did know and that you didn't move fast on enough. But I want you to give yourself grace because this is our first time being the age that we are, knowing the information that we know. This is my first time being 34 years old, okay? So I gotta give myself grace. I want you to give yourself grace, whether you are 29 or you're 56, give yourself grace and be grateful that you know now what you know and that you can do something with it. And you wouldn't know now what you know now had you not made mistakes and had you not lived life. So it just ain't that serious. Give yourself some grace and make the best choice that you can for yourself right now because regret is a waste of time. So listen, I hope that this episode was helpful. I hope that my transparency was helpful and I'm just wishing financial success and abundance on every single person who is listening to this episode. Go be profitable, whether you're working your nine to five or you're a full-time entrepreneur or you're a little bit of both. Go figure out how much money you need to make to have what you want to be profitable and then start looking into what makes the most sense for you in terms of saving, paying down debt and investing. Listen, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, leave me a comment, ask me all of the questions and I will do my very best to direct you to a resource or answer them. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please make sure that you like, subscribe and rate and I will see you next time. Until then, work hard, live soft and invest so you can have some freedom. Take care.